Uh, thank you for tuning in to my channel, uh, LCD Equine Solutions, with your host Travis here. Today's topic is going to be how to back up a horse off of a halter and lead rope, or uh, if you got your Makati set up on a snaffle bit rig, uh, you do the same thing. Now, with the groundwork, this is very beneficial in a multitude of ways. Uh, I use the backup from the ground if I'm backing a horse up out of a horse trailer. I stand by the stud door, just move, send energy down my rope, and they back right out if I have not taught them a cue of uh, backing up. Second thing is, if I'm in a stall and I need them back up, I could just do the same thing. If I'm on a pack train, I'm on my horse, and uh, the horse kind of goes forward me, I can just kind of back it up real easy, like just by using the lead rope, send energy down it. So. There's a lot of good reasons to teach this. Uh, it's a good thing uh, all the way around the board. And I'm going to demonstrate that today. Now, a couple principles we're going to use is one I've already showed you is a uh, promise of pressure. And that is called escalation of aid. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out on my YouTube channel here. The second principle we're going to use is the blood circle. And that has also been posted on this channel. And we're going to use both them principles to work with the uh, first belly here, just demonstrate uh, how to do it and what it should look like. And then we're going to grab a young, oh, 18 month old horse and uh, show you from the start to finish. That horse had a little bit of issues, and we'll go from there. Uh, so please hit like, please hit subscribe to my channel, and check it out. So the first thing I like to do is uh, with my bubble is I want to make sure that she's going to drop some road apples real quick. So I guess we'll keep talking a little bit until she finishes her job there. So uh, right now, I was talking about a blood circle before. Right now, she's in my space. A horse should never be in my space unless I invite the horse in. Okay, so we got Bella here. I'm going to use uh, Escalation of Aid, and I'm going to have my halter lead rope ready. Now, a horse can move six different directions. We've covered that already. Uh, the direction I want to concentrate on today is moving backwards. So the first step is, is I want to make sure that I can back my horse up. So I'm going to use my blood circle. And horses know, this is the third principle, they know body language. They grew up in a herd. They grew up around horses. They don't understand English. They don't understand German. They don't understand, I could say, Rocky Road ice cream all day long till the horse does me nothing until I verbally introduce a cue. So I'm going to use the advantage of body language in my blood circle. So I'm going to press my circle right on the horse and send energy off my body down into her, okay? Have her back up. So I'm going to back up. So she woke up there, and you see I'm not using a whole lot. She took a step back. So I asked right there. So I'm going to ask for another, take another step. I'm using my blood circle to press. Okay, nothing's going on. So now i got to escalate up to sending energy down the rope. There's several ways you could do this. What I like to do is I like to send energy straight down my rope towards the chest of the horse. So it looks like this. So I'm going to go forward in my horse. I'm going to send energy back until she backs up. And you notice I'm not sending a whole lot because I don't feel like she needs it. Good. Okay. So I'm backing her up. And you'll notice it's a backup is a two beat. Good. So if you looked off for a Bella right there, I knew she did it perfectly because she was actually picking her both her feet up. So I got a right foot and I got a left foot. If you picture me like this, okay, should be a diagonal pair backing up. So right hoof comes back, left hind comes back at the same time, diagonal pair. Left front, right back comes back, same time. That's a diagonal pair. That is a good backup. If they're just grabbing their foot and dragging it on the ground, okay, and then they drag the other one, creating 
a number 11 in the ground, that's no good, okay? That is pitiful. You want them to do a two beat count on backup on diagonal pair. That's the one you know they're doing it correctly. Watch once again at the foot pattern. So I'm gonna ask my body language. Okay, nothing happens. I'm gonna escalate to aid, send energy down the rope, nice and soft. Now you can see it. Now, when I'm sending energy down my lead rope, I'm just not going bam, bam, bam. Okay, what I'm doing is in timing. One, one energy of loop going down towards your chest. Good. One more energy down on the chest. And I, good. I want it to mean something. Okay. I'm not just going to sit there and just keep pounding her and pounding her. I want her to understand as softly as I can. See how she came into my space? I didn't ask her to come in. Okay, good. So I made her take a step back. That's that blood circles talked about. Now, you want to get timing with the hind feet, send energy down the lead rope as much as possible. And I'm not going to use escalation evasive tail because she's done a good job. Now, I got to have a way for my horse to come in towards me and ask him. You can either pull on the lead rope and hold her, or you can introduce a cue. I normally do a hand cue to my horses because I might be up there roping, might have a calf down here. I need the horse to pull up slack, so I want the horse to come towards me. The name of the game with horses is always have them move their feet. You don't move your feet. That's another principle. So I'm going to have Bella come in a spot. So a lot of times if they're looking off, see our heads kind of droop, our eyes closing, I might wake them up, hit my leg, bring my hand up, and have them come to me. There's no pressure on this lead rope. She comes up, and I just rub her, okay? That is a cue to come towards me. I just have my palm straight up and let her know, hey, that's what I want you to do to come in. And if you picture, if I had my, my catch rope on, it just slacking up. Now I can release my calf, whatever I caught, all right? So it's real easy, real simple. The key ingredients is escalation of aid, ask, suggest, tell. Your blood circle, a promise of pressure off your blood circle, escalation of aid, and then timing. You always hear, hear about feel, timing, and bounce. I got to feel when those legs are about ready to come up because I can feel the softness of my rope. I can suggest in timing, okay? I can put pressure on the leg, the foot comes up, I take the pressure off, okay? And that creates balance on the horse to know of my communication, what it's supposed to do. Good job, Bella. So I hope there's no questions on that. What we're going to do now is talk about, uh, or actually we're going to go grab that young horse. And we're going to do the same thing. You're going to see a different uh, attitude. You're probably going to see a different uh, uh, feel of a horse backing up off that young versus Bella here. All right. All right, folks, so we got Poncho here. He was born on Cinco de Mayo, if you remember that from the other videos. Uh, a very young horse. And uh, so we're going to work with him, show you the escalation of A, the blood circle on a backup. All right. You see his body language is he doesn't really understand what's going on. You see his quick reaction like that with his head pop and back. So we're going to see if we can uh, teach him how to back up a little bit. So right now is my personal space. Oh, man. Gloves are falling out of my pocket, my jacket here. This is what happens when you wear a ranching jacket. Uh, I'll get a picture of Kristen, her jacket. Well, this normally happens, and I this is a side note, I know. But I actually see this on Face Crack, a good picture of a, a jacket, of what a rancher's jacket looked like with a little story behind it. And I think I'll probably post it to this video, and you'll probably appreciate that. Anyhow, getting back on track. So I got my horse here. I'm going to use my body language and my blood circle, which is my personal space, for the horse to go one of the six directions, which is backwards. So in the beginning, I'm going to say back up, back, back. Good. He takes a step off. I'm going to release the pressure. I just used ass right there. I'm going to take a step up to him, and I'm just going to rub him. Okay. Notice I didn't pull him towards me. I went up to him. Because I don't want him to come in my space. Once I'm there, 
I'm using softness. Okay, I'm going to get his tension and I'm going to vibrate my rope. So you look, I'm going to ask on escalation of aid. Back up, back up. Good. He's actually doing really good on ask here. Okay. Now I'm going to teach him. Now he's on my space because you can see. I'm going to suggest once again, I'm going to send energy down my lead rope towards his chest because I want him to feel the direction I want him to go. Yes, I can move my rope side to side. It works if I need to, but I'd rather have a horse think. Okay, Ray Hunt, you say it best, think. And that is one of the things that we do is pressure. We have talked about it. A key principle is think off of pressure. I would rather him think about doing something and then take the pressure off. So I'm going to send pressure down, energy down my lead rope. He's thinking, take pressure off. I took the pressure right off of think. All right, come up to him one more time and rub. Now, yes, this horse is being easy pleasy. Okay, there's ones that you have to be more assertive and firm up more on a backup. So I'm going to back him up to the end of my lead rope. A lot of times I'll play a game. There we go. Now I'm going to get timing on his feet. One energy down. There you go, Poncho. Until he's at the end of the lead rope. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm going to let him know off of my voice they did a good job. Believe it or not, scientifically, they've proven that they can hear the inflection of your voice to know what's good and what's bad. So I'm going to use it as a principle of a backup. Now we're going to teach him to come towards me. I'm going to let him pause and think about what just happened. Think. Now I'm going to introduce my cue to come to my, into my personal space, my blood circle. For those who haven't seen my vehicle, or uh, sorry, my video before, blood circle, nothing more than where I can reach out, okay? I call it blood circle in the military, we're knife fighting, okay? You can get cut in that blood circle. If you are using your knife to whittle, and Boy Scouts, they teach you about the blood circle. You can't enter the circle because you get hurt. Same thing with a horse. A horse goes in your space. They can stomp on you. They break a bone. And they can nip at you. You can do all kinds of stuff. They can make you bloody. So I call it a blood circle. All right. So I'm going to introduce the cue for the horse to come forward towards me. Once again, if I want, I can slap my leg, wake him up. He's looking at me. So I'm going to put my hand up. And right now, you can see it doesn't mean nothing to him. So now I'm going to take my lead rope and I'm going to use one of the principles of pressure, okay? And I'm just going to bump, bump until he comes. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm just going to rub him when he gets here. Now this horse really wants to be with me. You can see that. And he's got a great mind. That's one of the things I like about this horse, okay? It's one of the reasons I purchased him because I liked his mind. Good boy. So that was easy. So hopefully, when we get him all the way back on this game that I kind of play, I'm going to take them all, back them up all the way up to my lead rope, and then bring them forward, okay? Now, you've noticed this process, and I don't have a horse to demonstrate right now, but if you want to have gone back with my lead rope, I would have to do tail, which means bring this lead rope underneath the jaw with the knot and hit underneath the jaw line. Most times they're headed to come back there and they know I mean business. And that is firming up. And I haven't had the reason to do that. So this is great. Great for him. Great for me. Bad for you because you can't see tell on the escalation of aid. But I think you can smart enough to get where I'm, where I'm thinking about here on escalation of aid. Okay, so I'm going to ask. Back up. Back up. Good boy. Ah, so he's going the wrong direction. So I'm just going to... I vibrate down my lead rope and bump, bump. Good. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Set energy down my lead rope towards his chest. Good boy. Notice I don't drag him around like a boat anchor on my lead rope. I vibrate and I might bump, bump, bump. Okay. A vibrating rhythmic pressure is what a young horse understands. Okay. The hack more is what they understand. So I don't drag them around like a boat anchor. You get a lot better results. Look at that head lower, okay? If you vibrate, you bump, 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 okay? So I'll share that with you as principle. Okay, so now he's getting uninterested. So I'm going to get him 
back into the ball game. I'm going to bump with my right hand. Still doesn't understand it. If I have to, I'm going to take a step to here. Bump. I tell you, take a step forward. Good boy. Good boy. So I'm trying to introduce him the cue of my hand being up. Good boy. I'm rubbing him. Let him think about it. Good boy. Now I'm going to have him back up. Out of my space. Back. Good boy. Getting timing with feet. Okay. So now he's going somewhere else. Bump, bump. I want two eyes on me. I got one eye. Good. Now, bump. Rhythm with the feet. You can see, once again, he's backing up properly because he's doing it on dying waves. We got licking and chewing. Give my cue to come here. Nothing happens, so I got to repeat the process. Good. Let's slack out as soon as he comes. Rub. Good boy. Good boy. And then pretty soon, that's going to mean something. Okay, that hand being up there. The hand cue. Good boy. Okay, we're going back up by my space again. And it, repetition is a key. But you have to make sure you are disciplined enough to not change the situation. It has to be white or black with the horse, no gray area. So your cues got to be the same. All your demeanors got to be the same. Everything has to be good to go for understanding communication. So we're going to repeat the process, repetition. Um, going to have them back up off of body language. Nothing happened. Strain out his eyes, back up. Good. So I firmed up a little bit more. Now I'm going to send energy down the rope towards the chest. Good. Good. One more step. Good. Introduce the cue. One more time. Nothing happens. Making the wrong thing hard, right thing easy right there, okay? Good. I got one step. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm just going to rub him everywhere. He's in my circle. I'm going to let him know that this is where he wants to be. With a hand cue. It's kind of like saying hi, and then coming over shaking your hand and introducing myself to you, okay? And I'm going to make it a pleasant conversation, just like I would with you. And then we just repeat the process. We do as many times as we can, okay, or we want. Now, when I think he's getting real good, I might just stop off of that real easy. And then go back to it, let him think about it overnight, and repeat it tomorrow, okay? A lot of times I'll do this five days straight. To where they're rock solid with this stuff. Okay, one more time just to see. Okay, back up. Off of body language. Nothing happens. Good. There was a thought. Okay, that's going back to think. So I rewarded that thought. Back up. Okay. Good. Getting timing with the feet. Send my loops back there. Good. Okay, now get my cue. There's a thought. There's a thought. Yes, 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 Poncho. Oh, good boy. Good boy. And see, I didn't have to that time pull on the lead rope. So he's starting to get a connection. So I'm just going to have a good conversation with him. I'm just going to rob him everywhere and say, hey, how's that sun feel on your body, your, uh, body there, buddy? Okay. Yeah. Real nice and easy, like. It was funny, I was uh, looking at a Facebook uh, article, uh, or face crack, I like to call it. And uh, they had this uh, lady uh, uh, trainer on this page and everything, and one of the clients was looking for rescued, had rescued horses, 
didn't want a cowboy to work with horses, one with a, a lady with soft hands, okay? And I looked at that, I'm like, uh, that's so stereotypical, okay, on both accounts. You know, everybody pictures a woman with soft hands, and everybody pictures cowboys being rough and uh, a rowdy crowd. And they are someone out there, but don't paint a broad stroke on everybody saying that's how it is, because it's not. I'm just going to put that out there. So when a trainer comes to you and asks for a pre-evaluation, they're, they're looking at the horse to see what they can do to help, but they're also looking at you, okay, and seeing what they're dealing with. Make sure there's good communication. Uh, but same thing on the ownership for responsibility, you should be looking at the trainer deciding what type of cowboy it is, okay? See if that old buckaroo cowboy has soft hands and knows what they're doing. Okay, people are people. They got strengths, they got weaknesses. You find the trainer that you want, the horseman, the horse lady, whatever. Okay. All right. We're going to do it one more time just to make sure, then I'll probably stop there and go to it tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to back up, back, back, and time it with the feet, back. Good, good boy. So I'm gonna firm up there a little bit because he looked off to the side and go back to being soft. He's getting bored because he's young. So I'm gonna send energy back. I didn't have to go to tell, which is send energy underneath the lead rope and smack him underneath the jaw. That would have been my last measure. Okay, get my hand. See if he comes up here. There's a thought. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, there we go. So he's getting the cue down. And that's why I challenge you. Challenge you to be as soft as you can on this, teaching your horses to come up to you off that cue. Now, some people do this. Some people do this because this is the shape of a horse's head in their mind. It doesn't matter what hand cue you use, just as long as you're consistent about it, all right? Okay. Well, I hope you like this. I hope it helps you out. Uh, it's just one technique. We'll have more videos on different methods of a backup of a horse. Yeah, uh, it's very handy. Because remember, when you cue into something back up, make sure you have a cue to bring them forward on you. Okay? So I hope you're doing well. Uh, shout out to the Air Force Academy rodeo team. Yes, they do have a rodeo team at college level up there at the academy. Uh, it was great being a coach there for five years, teaching horsemanship to them. Right now, they're uh, practicing out there in the snow yesterday. I was checking the, the traffic on it, and I do miss them. And uh, please look them up and support any college-level rodeo teams. Uh, they need the help, and they need sponsorship. Off that note, take care. Now you have the knowledge, and the knowledge is the solution. Adios. <music>